mangoes and some yummy onions there at the back as well. Help yourself to those. Probably assures me they will ripen. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's a man of faith, and so am I. So, so we're, we're doing well. So this morning we're looking at just a little thought I had. Uh, did God say that? And hopefully that gets clearer as we travel along this morning. Maybe you've experienced this. Sometimes, I don't, I don't need a show of hands, but you can just mentally do it. Sometimes I don't feel very godly. Sometimes I don't want to follow Jesus. Sometimes I think about giving up. Sometimes I allow bad thoughts to linger in my mind way too long. Sometimes I feel alone and unimportant. But Jesus is with me all the time. He meets me in my doubts. He reminds me that He is with me. He strengthens me so I don't give up. He shows me brand new mercies every morning. And He reminds me that He is really greater than any of my sometimes that I will ever experience. Let's pray. Father God, this morning as we just take a moment or two to look at your word, I thank you that you will be our hope and be our encourager and be our strength. When we have questions, when we have concerns, when it's hard going, when we doubt that you are there, when we feel you haven't heard our prayer, when sometimes we wonder why, but God, you are there reminding us all the time with the power of your spirit and your word alive to us come and remind us again this day Amen when hard times come because they will when at times things seem to weigh us down when we feel, how can I go on or how can I take this anymore? Then comes along that well-meaning Christian person to give us some advice. Well, maybe that's only in my family. <laughs> or maybe that's only me. They come along, that, that well-meaning Christian person that says, don't worry, when God closes a door, he opens a window. That is ridiculous. If you live on the second story or a 12 foot story building, isn't it? Well, the other one is God helps those who help themselves. Did God really say that? I think what they're trying to mean, the, the well meaning person, is that things will work out. But at the time when it's hard, and at the time when life feels unfair, it's the last thing you want to hear. Or maybe this one. Hey brother, because when you say that at the beginning of something, that sounds more spiritual. Don't forget God will never give you more than you can handle. God did not actually say that. Now that's a revelation for many of you. It's not actually in here. In those exact words, certainly it's maybe implied. And certainly I've said that and I've misquoted that. But the idea comes from what's up on the screen there in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Paul's focus for us is temptation. God will provide for us and make a way. We will always have a choice. Remember Joseph? He had a choice. When we are faced 
With difficult times, situations, temptations, run towards God, friends, not away from Him. For God wants to teach us and show us to depend on Him when things are concerning and hard. Hopefully that won't be us in a couple of weeks' time, just sitting here all alone. Remember Jonah? Jonah chapter 2, verses 2 and 7. He said, In my distress I called to the Lord, and He answered me. From deep in the realms of the dead I called for help, and you listened to my cry. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. God hears our prayer. God knows our concerns and our fears. Let us not doubt God when the storms of life come. Because He is there. He is right there with you and with me. Never let the presence of a storm make you doubt the presence of God. For He will never leave you or forsake you. David wrote in Psalm 145, verse 18, The Lord is all is near to all who call on Him. To all who call on Him in truth. And no doubt throughout our life, we have certainly called on the Lord. Let us seek God. Draw near. Don't push away. Don't hide your face. Call on His name. God, help me. God, hear my prayer. Hear my cry. He wants to save you and rescue you and set you free. Yes, there is fear. Yes, there is concern. In these current days, Psalm 34, verse 18, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Friend, God is close to you. God is close to me. God is close to us. Don't walk away, but let him in. I would rather be in a dark valley with Jesus than on a mountain top. All alone, without Him. God wants us to experience His power. We think we're okay. We think, hey, I'll show God, I know best, I can do it. We believe the lie, God won't give us more than we can handle. And it becomes about you, and it becomes about me. Becomes about my strength and my power and how good I am, not relying on God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're white knuckled, hanging on while the world crumbles around us. But, friend, we were created to need God and to rely on Him and to rest on Him in prayer and to feel His power, to feel His strength, and to know His provision. When we recognise that He didn't expect us to handle everything by ourselves, that's when we experience His provision and power. God help me. If you know the life of Paul, he had what was called a, a thorn in the flesh. Hello, Facebook, someone's getting a phone call. Might be God. Mm. <laughs> God friended me, yes. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Paul had what was called a thorn in the flesh. We're not told about what it was in God's word, but he pleaded with God on a number of occasions to, to take this away, to, to deliver him. Many scholars and theo, theologians have speculated what it could have been, a crippling illness, bad eyesight, I really don't vote for that one, appendicitis, um, some crippling illness. 
but it wasn't taken away. And so Paul lived with this affliction. Honestly, if God was going to heal someone, I'm voting for Paul. Anyone else? Hey, why not him? God, why not? Why not Paul? 2 Corinthians 12, 8 and 9, if you've got a Bible there. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. So it was quite a concern, quite an ailment, quite an infliction. It's not like a little sniffle or a cold. But the Lord said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. Last night, Noel and I, and a couple of our daughters, we got the opportunity to go and see the new movie, uh, I Still Believe, uh, the life story of Jeremy Camp and his first wife, uh, who had cancer and died, and that's about all I'll tell you. Go and see it. Take the box of, box of tissues. It's great. Um, yeah, it's a limited release. It's on in North Lakes, uh, probably Churnside as well, maybe up this way. I'm not quite sure, but yeah, really done very well. A great story of a couple's faith and hope and the provision of God that God doesn't let you go. And at time, the answer you receive may not be the answer that you had hoped for. But great. If you like Jeremy Camp's music, that will mean something to you. If not, that's fine. Verse 10 of that chapter. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness. Anyone? In insults? Anyone? Anyone? In hardship, in persecutions, in difficulties. Not many people lining up for that, is there? For when I am weak, then I am strong. It's in my weakness and brokenness. It's in my hardship that God comes through. He supplies what I need. He provides what I couldn't provide. Because it is there, in that place, I, me, must rely on God all the more. And it is there, in that place, that you, too, must rely on God all the more. When you don't have what it takes, tap into the power and presence of God. God, help me. I've discovered when I am at my least, when I am struggling, God comes. When I feel I have the least to bring and offer, that is when God's power works best in me. When I humble myself and are faithful to Him, as weak as I am, as hopeless as I am, whatever, however, God will meet me there. And God will meet you there. As faithfully we stand, as faithfully we care, as faithfully we serve, as faithfully I minister. At times, hey God, you've got to come through. Because I've given all I can give. In Psalm 103, praise the Lord, my soul. All my innermost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives your sins and heals your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. If God has called you to be a parent, there will be more than you can handle. If you are in ministry, there will be more than you can handle. If you are married, there will be more than you can handle. If you are unwell, there will be more than you can handle. If you have your own business, if you're busy at work, if you interact with other people on a daily basis, friend, there will be more than you can handle. You are not created to go it alone. Depend on God and each other. 
Hear what God wants to say to you today. He restores the broken, the overwhelmed. He wipes those tears and restores those lives. He doesn't expect us to maintain this level of uncertainty all the time. And as we come to a close, let us consider this thought. Results happen over time, not over night. Work hard, stay consistent, and be patient. Sure, many of us have said, hey God, I've done the patience thing, I've worked that one out. You were not created to go alone. Depend on one another. Depend on God. Read His Word. Be people of prayer and people of faith. For God is with us. Results happen over time. Results happen as we faithfully follow our Lord and Saviour. God bless you. Amen.